What's up everyone, it's Giovanni here from Breakpoint in Lisbon. I have the pleasure to be joined by Brandon Millman, CEO and founder of Phantom Wallet. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Great, enjoying the conference in the sun. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question regarding the situation of DeFi um, in general. What is still lacking in DeFi for uh, onboarding the, um, the mainstream uh, users? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, I'm biased, but I think the, uh, the wallet layer still, I think, has a, still a lot left to go in terms of sort of being able to onboard um, sort of like the next tens of millions of users. I think uh, what we have right now is sort of like barely scratched the surface. I think we, we all forget how small uh, the, the, uh, the user base is right now. And so I think wallets that have like kind of like a more like consumer friendly UI, UX, like mobile wallets, um, faster blockchains and that sort of thing, I think we'll, yeah, but we're, all, we're getting there. Okay, so you would say that the problem is uh, scalability of the technology? Yeah, that's definitely one. I mean, I mean, so yeah, you know, obviously, predominant chain out there is Ethereum. The the fees are basically untenable at the moment for the majority of people out there. I mean, like even in the U.S., small fraction of people can actually be using DeFi apps on Ethereum. Vast majority of people are priced out. Like no one had, no one can spend basically their like their whole day's wage like on one transaction and actually have it be usable. And so. I think, yeah, faster, cheaper blockchains, that's definitely going to be one huge unlock for just all across the, the globe. And what do you think about user experience? Because uh, in the past, like maybe one year ago, um, DeFi had a very clunky user experience. Has it improved? Uh, we are already at the, at the best level possible of user experience. There is still room to go. What do you think about the user experience factor here? Yeah, definitely still room to go. I feel like UI UX is one of our sort of fortes with the wallet and something that we spend a lot of time on. Um, we've spent actually a lot of, quite a bit of time uh, building DeFi apps on Ethereum previously. Um, so three co-founders of Phantom, we all used to work at this uh, DeFi startup called ZeroX on Ethereum and have a lot of experience bringing like uh, those apps to market. And so we had a lot of good ideas for how we can sort of improve the wallet side of things. And yeah, I think we're, we're on our way, but we're just getting started. You see wallet as a key element for growing the space. Uh, can you talk? Can you talk a, a bit more about this aspect? So, uh, why are wallet? Why is wallet technology so important in order to make uh, DeFi space really mainstream? Yeah. So that's that's a great question. So basically, uh, blockchain ecosystems are kind of like have a, they're kind of like a marketplace with two sides. So there's users, which are kind of like the demand side, and then there are dApps and applications are kind of like the supply side. So applications are providing the supply, users are going there to make, um, users are coming and, tr and, and kind of eating that supply. And the really interesting thing about wallets is that they're actually the point at where those two pieces meet. And so if wallets can do a really great job both on the developer side and on the user side, it actually has the ability to sort of like 10x the underlying ecosystem. And so I think the wallet's like really crucial. And um, regarding regulation, so yesterday I was talking to a representative of Galaxy Digital. Yeah. Of course, they are dealing all the time with big institutions. And they told the, this guy told me that um, uh, institutions are very interested in, in DeFi, but they are very, uh, it's very difficult for them to get in because of the regulatory framework, which is uh, preventing them from uh, entering the space because of KYC and um, AML regulation primarily. So uh, how is this um, situation going to evolve? Are these big institutions cut out from the DeFi space or there, there will be a moment where there will be uh, the possibility for them to, to come in and how? Yeah, that's, that's a great question and I feel like it's definitely a situation that's still shaking out. I mean, the, uh, you know, there's just an inherent risk to all of this technology and, and everything. And I, I feel like the current regulatory kind of forces at play 
are really struggling to keep up with all of this like explosion of new technology. And so it's going to be a while until things shake out and, and all of that. So institutions, I, I feel like we'll see more institutions take just risk to get in because I, I doubt there's any, going to be any very clear regulatory certainty for a number of years, to be honest. So I think you'll just see institutions just kind of, kind of bite the bullet, take some risk and jump in. But does the space need them in order to, to continue evolving or can the space do, with, do grow without the institution part in it? What do you think? Uh, no, no, not necessarily. I think the space has been and is continuing to grow like just straight up on the consumer side and I don't think it's, it's really necessary for institutional institutions to get that involved and to really push the space forward. Obviously, obviously it helps to have some of those big voices to, at play. Uh, you know, on the regulatory side and, and all of that, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's not necessary. Okay, and uh, now let's talk a little bit about how do you see the future of DeFi evolving. So, we have different scenarios, we have uh, different uh, layers that can be um, used in DeFi. We have layer one protocols, layer two protocols. Um, how do you see the future of DeFi evolving? Is going to be there just one protocol or multiple protocols interacting? I've been talking with uh, one of the founders of Polygon not long ago, and he was telling me that he doesn't see um, multiple layer one coexisting in the long term. He sees just one layer one, which is Ethereum, and everything else built on top of it. Do you kind of share the same uh, maximalistic view, I would say? <laughs> Uh, I think it depends on, I guess, like what uh, time range you're talking about. Um, I mean, the the fact is, like right now, like the demand for block space is super high, um, and that is why you're seeing such high fees on Ethereum and all of that. All the high fees are basically a direct response to like how much demand there is, and in a in a marketplace situation where there's so much demand, there needs to be more supply that meets up. Like there's an opportunity for supply to meet up, and that's why. You're seeing like all these different chains like Polygon, Solana, etc., like, sort of stepping up to meet that supply, and I think, uh, and that's just like with this, and that's just a, such a small amount of users still. Like we've just barely scratched the surface. Like in order to like get through that stage where like hundreds of millions of users, billions of users, there's going to be even more and more demand, and therefore more and more supply will need to spin up. So I think we're nowhere, nowhere really close to understanding like where the the end state is. Um, and what it looks like. My guess is that it's going to be some sort of multi-chain world. Okay, so you see like Ethereum and Solana coexisting uh, in the same uh, space without uh, the risk of any of the two to kind of completely uh, outtake the other one. I think so. I feel like in most market dynamics, like you, it's very rare you see someone who's just completely dominating with no other, like it's Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon. All of them, you know, could make a similar argument. Like they could, they have enough infrastructure and network effect to like, sort of like, uh, you know, destroy the other. But, uh, you know, in reality, you know, there's there's many different players involved, and so I I don't know why the blockchain space would evolve that differently from that. Okay, thanks a lot.